All right, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Hugh Sung. I'm with the Oral History Program here at the Battleship New Jersey, uh, which is docked here in Camden, New Jersey. And today is Friday, June 14th of 2019, and we have the honor of having Mr. Frederick Gehring from Cecil, Wisconsin, uh, who served on the battleship uh, during the ship's uh, second commissioning uh, during the 1950s. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Frederick Gehring, uh, I want to welcome you back home. Thank you. And uh, you don't mind if I ask you to remove your cover, please, so we can see you better? All right, thank you. Is this your first time back, sir? Yes, it is. Okay, how's it feel to be back home? Wonderful. Bring back memories, sir? A few. Okay, that's great. So let's uh, begin by asking your current age, sir. I'll be, I'll be 89 in September. Okay, and uh, let's begin this conversation um, with a story about yourself. So. Uh, how did you get involved in the Navy? Anything you remember from inspirations? Well, my father was a member of the Naval Reserve in Milwaukee and commanding officer of the reserve station there. And when it came time to either join the draft board, I chose the Naval Reserve instead. Okay. And uh, you also grew up during World War II, correct, sir? Yes, I did. Right. My, my sister and myself and my mother. Okay. Anything you remember from growing up uh, during that time? Yes, it was rough. It was rough for my mother, but at times, and uh, but uh, we, we looked out for one another, and we did what we had to do. Okay. Uh, how do you remember the home front during that time uh, in the area you grew up in, Wisconsin? I grew up in uh, West Dallas, which is a suburb of uh, Milwaukee. And I went to school there, grade school and uh, high school. Okay. Do you remember certain events like uh, uh, Victory Over Europe Day or Victory Over Japan Day? Vaguely, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, anything you recall from uh, witnessing those events? I really don't know. Okay. All right. Not a problem, sir. All right. So uh, let's talk about your time in the Navy. Uh, where did you go to basic training? I did my basic training with a Naval Reserve uh, station in Milwaukee. We met uh, once a week on Thursday nights. Okay, and this was reserve, sir? All, res all reserve time, yes. Okay. And uh, uh, what was your uh, rate? I was discharged in July of 1952. My rate was ICFN. Okay. Was I C stands for intercommunication. Was that the rate you started with, sir? No, I started with uh, in the radar, the, with radar. Okay. So, uh, anything you remember from basic training? Well, I went to went to drill, and uh, we had our radar classes, and uh, did what we had to learn for radar plotting and uh, tracking and things like that. And once a year, you took a two-week cruise on some ship and improved your uh, knowledge of radar. Okay. Uh, did you go to A school for that training? No, I did not. Okay. Yeah, but the, the training I had was aboard ship on the, during two two-week cruises. Okay. So where was the, what was the first ship you were on? Oh. First ship that I went out of for a two-week cruise was the USS Little Rock, a light cruiser, and that was out of Norfolk. All right, Norfolk, Virginia. Yes. Okay. Anything you remember from the Little Rock? No. Okay, but you worked on the radar there, right? I really don't remember what what I did there. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, not a problem, sir. Uh, do you remember the next ship after that? It was the PC-808, which was assigned to a Milwaukee Reserve Station. Okay. And I was, uh, I was meth cook there for that one. Okay. Uh, so your rate was still radar, right? Right. Okay, but you work with the cooks on right. that ship? All right. I believe they were called cul culinary specialists. Uh, I'm not familiar with that phrase. Okay, not a problem. Well, there are many rates and they do change. All right. Uh, the PC for the historical record, that stands for? Patrol, like, patrol craft. Patrol craft, okay. 
So you carried like torpedoes? No. No? All right, so you're not it like was, a... Uh, I, I, I think they were probably submarine, submarine plotters to chase them. Okay, I see. Because I believe the They P were small, small ships. All right, because I believe it was the PTs that carried them. Yes. Okay. So um, after the PC, uh, where'd you go next? I went on a destroyer out of uh, New Orleans, but I'm not familiar with uh, what the name of it was. That was uh, there. I did my radar, trim more training there. Okay, so additional radar training on that ship. Right. Okay. And uh, so, when did you get to the battleship? When I got called to active duty during the Korean War, and that was in. January 1951, and we uh, met the New Jersey in Bayonne, New Jersey, just right out of Mothball. And we got out there and we went down to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba for Cape Town cruise and improved training for everybody. And then from there I went back to, we went back to Norfolk, Virginia, which was our home port. And I went to school for five days in Boston for additional radio radar training and then back to the ship and then from there we went through the canal and relieved the Missouri and Hawaii and then on to the front lines in uh, Japan. Okay, uh, just to back uh, track a little bit, uh, upon hearing the news of the uh, uh, outbreak of conflict in Korea, uh, what was the reaction to those around you? I really don't know. Okay. I just did what I had to, what I had, I had to do. All right. And uh, you were there on the ship for the uh, recommissioning ceremony? No. Oh, okay. So it was over by the time you got on? Yes. Okay. Well, what was your first impression when you saw the battleship? That was a lot of ship. <laughs> well, we got aboard there, and the guy said, well, okay, you got weekend off. And so I went up to uh, Upper New York to visit some of my relatives and then back to the ship. So I thought, oh, wait, great, this is going to be a picnic, you know, but here we are. Okay. And you were operating the uh, radar there, right? Well, plotting and answering the radio phones and operating different radars, yes. Okay. Uh, were you ever operating like the uh, gun radar, the fire control directors? No. Okay. Just strictly surface and air. Okay. Because there are actually multiple radars in the ship. Yes. All right. So what can you remember from either stopping at Guantanamo Bay, the Panama Canal, or Hawaii, anything that stands out during those stops? Well, we had, had training in uh, atomic bomb attacks, you know, and things like that. And they went out and they did their firing it to one of the uh, islands out there so the gutters could improve their, their work. Okay, so you were shooting at islands for practice, right? Right. Okay. Uh, what was it like to witness those guns fire? Noisy. Okay. So, uh, you get about all I could say. Okay. And uh, where is your battle stations on the ship? Do you remember which level? Probably three decks down. All right. In the Combat uh, Information Center, or CIC? Right. Oh, okay. So that's where, you, that's pretty much the eyes and ears of the ship for radar, right? Yes. You monitor the radar. All right. Uh, for the historical record, uh, why don't you talk about uh, your duties uh, down at CIC? No, well, like I said, like I said before, are you doing a plotting board or answer, answering uh, radio telephone? And that's about it. Okay. Uh, would you look out for like any potential obstacles like small island or shallow water or was that done at the chart house? No, that was done with sonar. Okay. All right, so uh, upon uh, arriving in Hawaii to relieve uh, the Missouri, uh, did you get to see the Missouri pass by? She was, she was docked down there and so were we and they just exchanged officers and greetings and uh, did their, their, their work in 
transferring commissions, and we we came back and uh, took off to Japan. All right, you never stepped on board the Missouri, right? Pardon? You never stepped on board the Missouri, did no, you? No, I did not. Oh, okay. Because I hear some stories of if two battleships like these were docked side by side, you might enter the wrong ship accidentally. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know about that. Yeah, just as some mentioned that. All right, so after uh, Hawaii, oh, by the way, you did visit uh, Pearl Harbor too, right? Uh, do you remember visiting Pearl Harbor? In yes, Hawaii? we did. Okay. Uh, how was passing by the Arizona Memorial, or did you not do that? I really can't recall. Okay. It's been over 60 years, my friend. I'm sorry, I can't, can't remember everything. All right, not a problem. All right, so after uh, Hawaii, you got to, um, was it Korea first, or did you stop somewhere else? We before? stopped in Yokosuka, Japan, which was our home port. And from there, we, uh, we, we did our duty, we went down around the islands and up the coast to Korea and supported the uh, troops on the beach, on the inland, with the shore fire control party. Okay. Uh, did you step foot in Yokosuka, Japan? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, on, on liberties, yes. All right. So how was that like? It was interesting. Something different. Okay. Did you interact with the Japanese people while you are there? I did have a chance to uh, go to a rest camp up in uh, up in the hills there in Japan, and uh, that was probably for just for a few days, and came back. It was interesting. Okay. Very nice. All right. All right. So, uh, uh, why don't you talk about uh, arriving in Korea and uh, opening fire in the gun line? Uh, anything you recall from there? I really, I really can't recall. It. You did your duty, and that was it. All right. All right, no problem. Right, and uh, I think it was Captain Tyree at the time, uh, but you say you didn't recall meeting him? Um, yes. All right, but how were the other officers that you met? Like, uh, how was the interaction between the officers and the enlisted? There was mixed feelings between the, the regulars and reserve sailors. If you kept your mouth shut and did your duty, you, you were all right, but... That was it. Okay. But uh, you were active at this time. Yes. And uh, they could care less. They didn't know you were a reservist being active, right? Probably not. Okay. All right. So uh, let's talk about everyday life uh, on the ship uh, besides duties. Uh, well, what do you recall being like a sailor every day? I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. Okay. Like any like recreation you engaged in, had access to um, periodicals? Oh, we had, we'd have movies in the evening, but they weren't show, shown until the captain came down. And uh, they had their own basketball team. And no, no. Okay. So the captain actually watched the movies with you? Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, any uh, USO shows that um, you got to attend? No. Okay. D do you remember, like, maybe, like, watching them uh, from any broadcasts? No. Okay. Because that's, that's a memory a lot of sailors would take. Uh, any ports of calls that stand out besides Japan or Hawaii? Well, we did have to go into Sasebo, Japan, for additional ammunition, but... We're in and we're out, so maybe uh, two days tops. Okay. And that was it. So that's rearming, right? And uh, if you got a chance to go ashore, you know, took it. I didn't. Okay. Uh, did you participate in any of the um, rearming procedures? No. Okay. All right. So um, anything else you remember from the battleship being on the ship? No, nothing. Okay. And uh, you left the ship uh, the, the following year, right? Uh, July 1952, I was discharged in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, okay. So this was after the ship's uh, like first tour there and before the conflict ended. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, after the battleship, uh, anything you did before discharge, like on shore, like any other duties you had? 
You know, I can't recall. Okay. All right, no problem. So. Okay. Okay, sir. So, uh, there was something else you wanted to mention? No, I, I, I enjoyed the, being in the Navy. Uh, father was, was an officer, and uh, he seemed to like it. But it was a duty that I had to do because the war was on, and you were either drafted or you volunteered. So I chose to volunteer to go to the Naval Reserve. As a uh, in memory, of my, well, I can't say that either. It honored my father's uh, wishes, I suppose. But uh, that's about all I have. Okay. Uh, so, looking back, uh, is there any impact the Navy uh, had in your life that you carried on with you in your post Navy life? I, I, well, I watched the Army and Navy game, and uh, was, I had an uncle that graduated from West Point in the Corps of Engineers, and uh, he retired. After a while, he passed away. He buried in Arlington, and he was a two-star general. He was involved in the Manhattan Project and all things like that. So I, I'm just a small part in the military family of the, that we have. Oh, yes, we all are. We're just trying to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Yeah. That's what a general once told me. Right. All right, so anything you want to talk about your post-Navy life? Like uh, resuming civilian life? I'm here. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, it's, like I say, like I me probably mentioned before, if you did your job, kept your mouth shut, you got along fine with everybody. And that's the only way to do it. Because everybody had their own ideas and had their own friends and ways of doing things. And if you weren't part of it, stay out of it. Yes, sir. All right, so we're just about coming to the um, close of this interview. So. Uh, is there anything that uh, I didn't ask that uh, you would like to talk about that you think might be important for uh, any listener or watcher in the future? Well, my, my word of wisdom to those young young people is do your job you have to do and keep your mouth shut. That, that's it. Yeah. Works well during basic, I can tell you. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, uh, in that case, we can uh, close our interview. So, um, Mr. Frederick Gearing, I want to thank you for your service and the coming back uh, home on board uh, to Battleship New Jersey. And I uh, hope you have a great visit here and a great time visiting your old ship. So, this closes our interview. And uh, once again, my name is Hugh Sung, assistant with the Oral History Program here at the Battleship New Jersey. And we are on board the Battleship New, Jer New Jersey docked here in Camp, New Jersey. Today is Friday, June 14th of 2019, and uh, this recording and any indexes, abstracts, or transcripts uh, will be stored here at the Oral History Program at the Battleship New Jersey, as well as to the uh, Library of Congress Veterans History Projects and the New Jersey State Library Systems. And all the recordings will be made available to writers, teachers, uh, historians, and I'm Hugh Sung, signing off. Thank you, sir. Thank you.